Hello everyone, and you're very welcome to tonight's Herdwatch webinar, uh, which is all about expert advice on your cow's performance. So my name is Owen Maloney. As always, I'm man in the post here tonight for Herdwatch. Um, so we're going to be giving everybody here watching plenty of advice around all things got to do with your cow performance, milk recording, and selective dry cow therapy. Um, but first of all, before we get into that, I'd like to introduce our guests this evening. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome Hazel Mullins. Um, Hazel, you're very welcome. Uh, Thank you so much, Owen. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, I suppose for, for those of you who don't know who Hazel is, uh, she is a large animal clinical director and head of communications at Highfield Veterinary Group in County Kildare. Um, but Hazel is also very actively involved on her, her family dairy farm at home in County Cork. Um, and uh, I suppose you don't mind me saying as well, Hazel, you're very active on Instagram. So you have a big following there where you, you often <laughs> share your, your videos day to day about your veterinary practices um, and stuff yeah. you see out on the farm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, you're very welcome to today's webinar, um, Hazel. Any news or how has the move been up to Highfield? Thank you, Owen. Yeah, it's been um, a little bit different obviously because you know I've just gone from full-time um you know full-time large animal vet tb testing calls everything to a more I suppose clinical director role which is more mentoring management also the communication side of my job of has come from the probably the instagram so uh, a lot of it is social media marketing and yeah it's really good it's just um I've been here about six weeks now so I'm, I've explored a bit of Kildare but yeah. I'm home to Cork every Wednesday night. Uh, <laughs> so it's, I'm still a Cork woman. Oh, yeah, back down. You know. yeah, mate. Oh, yeah, back down. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, we're delighted to have you on board, Hazel. Really looking forward to seeing what you're ready for, for everybody that's that's here this evening. Um, moving on swiftly to our second guest of the evening. Um, very, very happy to say I have Garod Kenny in the house with us tonight. Garod, how are you? I'm not too bad, Owen. Can't, so can't complain. Good. I suppose it may I give you the good intro as well, Garod. Um, for, for people who maybe haven't seen any of our webinars with Garod before, um, Garod is product owner here at Herdwatch. Um, he's been, I suppose, really heavily involved in many of the fantastic new features and benefits that we've added into Herdwatch, uh, including the Herdwatch Next Generation app. Garod was heavily involved in all those. Um, but for maybe people that don't know, he's also a very, very handy man on a lawnmower. So um, really happy, Garod, that you've taken some time out of that busy grass putting schedule to to help us out this evening. Yeah, it's not the best even here on for, for cutting grass a bit wet now. It's only be getting clogged up. So I'm um, happy, happy to join in and help you out. Yeah, well, happy to have you on board, Garod. Um, looking forward to Garod demoing some of the, the new features um, around milk module and selective dry cow and, and basically just drying off your cows and herd watch as well. So we'll be hearing from Garod and Hazel really soon. Um, so what exactly are we going to be covering uh, in the next 30 to 40 minutes? So I'm going to be handing over to Hazel in a couple of minutes. She has um, some great slides ready to go around everything got to do with your cow performance. So everything from what is selective dry cow therapy, you know, um, what are the benefits of milk recording? Um, how can milk recording, I suppose, help to drive our cow performance? And why is, is milk recording becoming mandatory in 2022? Once Hazel wraps up, uh, we're going to pass over to Garod and Garod is going to actually do some demoing of the Herdwatch app um, and showing everybody how we can actually track your cow performance in Herdwatch. Um, we'll also show you how you can record your dry offs and identify cows that might be suitable for selective dry cow therapy. Um, we might give you a little preview as well of some some of, of the, the new stuff that we're working on that might come soon, including mobility scoring and uh, some hoof care as well. And as always, on all our web webinars, we're going to finish with a question and answer session. So if you do have any questions for Garode, for Hazel or for myself, anything got to do with any, any stuff Hazel covers or anything got to do with Herdwatch at all, just as always, use the chat facility. You can just pop us in a little question there and we're going to leave a couple of minutes to answer as many as we can at the end. Mervyn is obviously helping out as well, so he's going to answer questions throughout in the background. Hazel, before I do hand over to you, um, for everybody that's that's in attendance this evening, maybe it's your first webinar, so we'd like to just give you a little quick overview of the Herdwatch story to date. Um, so I suppose since Herdwatch launched in 2014, nearly eight years ago at this stage, uh, we've gone on to become the market leading app in Ireland and the UK. We now have over 15,500 members that are using our app daily uh, to remove paperwork, save time, and ultimately make better decisions and farm management decisions day to day. Um, we, in that time, we've managed to download almost 2 million animals from the relevant departments, so ag food here in Ireland, 
across the water in the UK, we're linked in with PCMS. And obviously in Northern Ireland, we're linked in with APHIS. And we're very, very short of 2 million calves that have also been registered using the Herdwatch app. Growth might give you a little bit of insight around our farm maps. We had a webinar on farm maps very recently. It's a brand new feature that we've added into the app. And in the last month, we've actually managed to see 55,000 acres of fields and paddocks that have been mapped using the Herdwatch app. So as I said, we launched in 2014, and I suppose since that time, we, we've constantly innovated and tried to improve our app. And key to that has been engaging with our farmers, listening to our farmers and taking their feedback on board. So in the year since 2014, we've had many major milestones and changes to Herdwatch. You can see some of them here. In 2017, we actually launched in the UK, which is a major milestone for us, um, allowing UK farmers to save time and make better decisions on their farm. We then moved on throughout 2018 and into 2019 and continued to innovate. We added our, our tag and medicine scanner, and we also linked up with ICBF to allow farmers to bring in their breeding and their milk records directly into the app. And then throughout 2019 and 2020, we continue to add new benefits and new features to help make Herdwatch even quicker and even easier to use. But I suppose a massive milestone was achieved last year. Grode was heavily involved in this as well. It was the launch of our next generation app, which I suppose made Herdwatch, as we said at the time, leaner, meaner, and faster, um, and just continued to allow farmers to do what they needed to do on farm quickly and easily and remove paperwork and remove headaches. I suppose fairly soon after Next Generation launched in, I think it was June 2020, we then um, added batch calf registration. So something that dairy farmers, suckler farmers were able to avail of and get all their calves registered in one go. And then moving on into 2021, we added some picture records where you can add, you know, obviously your animals images to, the, to each animal's profile. Early in 21 as well, we linked up with Done Deal. We created Verified by Herdwatch, which allowed our Irish and Northern Irish farmers when they're creating ads on Done Deal to buy and sell animals, they can now be verified by Herdwatch. So that animal that you post on Done Deal, it's exactly what it says on the tin. And um, so value for buyers and for sellers uh, on Done Deal. And focusing in around, I suppose, our dairy farmers, particularly this year, we've added a huge amount of functionality and, and extra benefits for our dairy farmers uh, very recently with the launch of our milk module. Farm Maps has been released as well and other milk milk records as, such as bulk tank collections and uh, some other performance modules for weights and for beef farmers as well. So massive innovation over the last seven years to continue to make Herdwatch simple and easy to use. Hazel, I'm going to bring you in at this point. I've done a lot of talking already, so I'm um, really looking forward to what you have to show everybody. So I know you have loads of stuff ready to go. So I'm going to hand over and let you take over from here, if that's OK. Perfect, Owen. Thank you so much. Um, it's amazing to see the journey of Herdwatch uh, from the early, you know, 2014 up to now. And I, I think I probably joined around 2018 on, we got it on the farm. And I must say it's changed how, you know, how less stressed we are with, you know, board via inspections. And my dad is very impressed with it. And, you know, we're your number one fan on, on our farm. So we oh, use it personal. all the time. And dad, anytime we dose anything on the farm and, He's always like, did you put that into the app? So it's great. And uh, yeah, no, it's just brilliant to see how far it's come. And I'm so glad to be involved tonight. Thank you so much for asking me. The topic is first at the start, it's slightly heavy. So excuse that. But I think anything to do with EU regulations is always going to be slightly heavy. Um, but I've tried to break it down into kind of simple as, as I can. But Look, the document on this regulation, 2019-6, it's, it's one of these regulations that all us vets are fully aware of. You know, there's lots in it. Um, it takes a while to read it. Um, but I suppose tonight I'm focusing on how this affects our use of blanket dry cow therapy and how we will have to use selective dry cow from 2022 onwards. Now, the in like there's a lots of little bits that haven't been fully established with the department and everything yet so i won't be able to maybe answer every question on it yet because there's still a little bit of unknowns but one thing is for sure that blanket use of antibiotic dry cow treatment will be prohibited so that we will have to make efforts to reduce our use of antibiotics in our non-infected cows uh, going forward in january 22. so this year probably be with the last year that we will see blanket dry cow therapy used on farms. 
Um, my own farm at home, uh, we are starting to, we're having, we're going to start um, milk recording before we dry off this year. So we'll have it all in place for next year. And I know we are a little bit behind the times, um, but as you can, I'll explain. Later on, it's, well, there's actually only 47% of Irish farms. It might be on the, that was the last kind of recorded percentage, but that currently is the level that, that Irish farms are milk recording. So thank God we're not in like, you know, one or 2%, but definitely it's time to change and I'm fully behind it and dad is as well. So per, 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 firstly, Metaphylaxis and prophylaxis. So metaphylaxis is treating animals in advance of an expected disease outbreak. So this is kind of your weanlings into your shed, giving them all a shot of antibiotic. That is going to be prohibited in some shape or form. You know, with diagnostics and veterinary advice, it may be allowed in some circumstances, but general use of antibiotics on healthy animals going into sheds like that is, is, won't be allowed. Um, prophylaxis then kind of is what we're talking about tonight is treating treating animals to prevent a disease so that's what an, an antibiotic um, dry cow does it you're giving an antibiotic when there's no disease there majority of the time I know you've got your high cell count cows but the the low cell count cows they're not diseased and you're you're giving them an antibiotic that they don't need and that's prophylaxis so that will only be like these will only be allowed in very exceptional circumstances so in general prohibited from january 2022 so it's high and then you've got the other side of it then is your um critically important antibiotics and um, these are going to be restricted use so these are your fluoroquinolones uh, your fourth generation cephalosporins i won't name names tonight um but i'll keep it i'll keep it with the drug names but your short acting dry cow tube your 24 hour milk withdrawal one that's a fourth generation cephalosporin so that will be prohibited but luckily we have lots of cloxacillin penicillin first generation cephalosporins that we'll still be able to use um on selected cows so that's kind of an overall of what the regulation means for dry cow treatment so why is this regulation coming in? Everyone has probably heard of antimicrobial resistance, AMR. It's a real concern, and it's not just a concern for, you know, in animals, but also for people. And it's got that One Health, that's what it's called, the, the World Health Organization is the One Health concept. It's a whole society approach. It's not just vets, it's not just farmers, it's humans. You know, if you take an antibiotic at home, you know, that you don't take two days, you take the full course, you, you do what the doctor says, and that's, you know, your responsible use of antibiotics. You're not taking antibiotics for a flu. You're, you're taking antibiotics maybe for an, a bacterial chest infection. So it's all about, we're all in it together. And, you know, it is scary. It's a scary change because we're so used to blanket dry cow treatment, for example. But, you know, change has to occur. And, you know, we, we should be at the forefront of it. Uh, so AMR deaths in the EU are over 25,000 at the moment, which is really scary. And they're estimating, the World Health Organization is estimating that 10 million deaths will occur in the world in, by 2050 due to AMR, which is not ideal. And superbugs, that's what we're talking about. It's bacteria mutating to be able to avoid these antibiotics from, from targeting them. And then they're becoming superbugs. So MRSA, those type you know, MRSA is only the tip of the iceberg. There's so many more now currently in, in hospitals and, and everything. So we all have to do our bit to um, reduce our use and also the type of antibiotics we're using. So, you know, don't use the critically important ones as well. So our next slide then is, what is selective dry cow treatment? So this is a slide, actually, I went to a, a really good course back pre-COVID um, by Norman Beggs. Um, he's set up the other, other health solutions in the North. And I just thought this slide, I took a picture. I was going through my phone looking for photographs for tonight's talk. And I came across this picture from two years ago and it, it, it kind of sums it up. Mastitis is not caused by a deficiency of intramammary antibiotics. You know, there's so many different, you know, there's, uh, you know, hygiene um, is the main thing that causes, you know, mastitis. And it's, no antibiotic should be used to take over from poor hygiene. So that's kind of the message of tonight's talk. And it's all about using your data, keeping the hygiene good 
and keeping your records really well and picking out those cows that we don't need to use antibiotics in. So it is the future drying off. Um, cows are selected to receive sealer only um, at dry off. So this mimics the, the keratin plug and makes a, a seal in the teat to prevent um, any bacteria going into the udder during um, the dry cow period. Um, so, of course, the start of the dry period and just before calving is when the udder is the most susceptible to bacteria entering. So it's a really important time to have the hygiene really, really good at dry off, but also pre-calving. And also, well, like throughout the, throughout the whole dry period is essential, but they're the real risk periods. So it is to minimise the risk of mastitis in the dry period is the short term aim, but the long term aim is to reduce antimicrobial resistance, AMR. So before you embark on uh, selective dry cow therapy, please, please, please consult your vet and have a chat with them about, you know, any fears you have and what you can do to help the whole process and how to select these cows as well, because there is a bit of science behind it. And my next slide is key, key criteria for success. So you can see here now this, this cow is um, done. It's not my own cow. It's, it's a cow that I, I treated when I was um, in practice. And it, you can see that udder is absolutely blown up like a balloon. And you can see that there's a lot of muck and dirt and, you know, hygiene, hygiene, hygiene key is the key to successful dry cow therapy, so selective dry cow therapy. So identifying the select the infected cow at the point of dry off, the avoidance of infection during the dry off process. So that's when you're inserting the tubes and keeping the cow uninfected throughout the dry period. And especially, you know, those risk periods, as I said, at the start of the drying off, at, at dry off and also around calving and keeping the, keeping the cow uninfected at calving. So it's, um, you know, you get the calf out and it's, it, the process isn't done then. You have, to, you have to keep the hygiene up because that's when their immune systems are down, their sphincters are open, and that's when you need to really um, put mastitis control on top of your list. So Animal Health Ireland, um, for those of you watching in Ireland, have set up a cell check TASA dry cow consult. So this is me with a dry cow consult last year, and I did quite a few of them. I think I did about 11. And uh, it was great. So what you do is you go on to the Animal Health Ireland website and you sign up your herd for, and you have, there's so, certain criteria. So you have to be milk recording. You have to have a bulk milk um, across the whole year of less than 200,000. And generally the Animal Health Ireland would look at all your records and they'll decide if you're eligible to go ahead for a consult, whether you meet all the criteria. And then I get, or the vet gets notified so ideally, you, notif you pick a vet that's in your practice, that knows your farm. And um, there's a lot more vets actually trained up in the last couple of days. And um, there's been a lot of training. So if your vet wasn't trained up last year, more than likely there's a vet in your practice trained up this year. So the, you go through, you, you, have, you can have a cup of tea with the farmer and you can have a real chat. Have a, it's all, and beforehand as well, there's a lot of ICBF records to print off and you know pick out those cows and then we go through that list of cows um, mm -hmm. each cow with the farmer to see okay has she got three paps has she got warts is she you know a kicker all these kind of things come into play when you're when you're starting off with selective dry cow you want to pick the cows that are going to be amenable to it and also have your low cell counts as well so recent infection rate so that's your kind of new infection over since the last milk recording less than seven percent um drying off procedures are watched and discussed um so we we kind of go through the whole process and there's a there's a lovely questionnaire hygiene protocols and housing discussed so we walk around the dry cow sheds sometimes it's pre kind of housing so there mightn't be any cows in there at the time but we do our best to try and, and see if there's anything issues like leaking water troughs or broken, you know, scrapers or anything like that, that we can improve the hygiene in that shed. Um, so it's a great service. It is uh, funded by the Animal of Ireland. So it's for farmers that are eligible, definitely recommend signing up to it. Uh, so these are sample criteria for it. So bulk milk under 1,000 milk recording, ideally monthly. But I think four is what you need. Um, in the year and one, one, one month prior to dry off. Uh, so records of clinical cases and outcomes. So this is where Herdwatch 
can come in really handy. Um, so you really need to be recording your clinical mastitis because sometimes the somatic cell count doesn't, you know, it depends on what bug causes it. So maybe it's like an environmental bug like E. coli. You won't get that big spike in somatic cell count, but they would have had a clinical case of mastitis. So you need to record those, you know, whether it's herd watch or somewhere because your milk records might show that that cow had a mastitis and you might have completely forgotten. So um, less than 2% clinical case rate in the last three months. And then cows consistently under 2,000. It depends. Talk to your vet. Different different farms will have different thresholds. So it's definitely, you know, under 2,000 would be would be the minimum. A lot of my farmers last year did under under 100,000 and they were they got on really well. Um, and then no clinical case during lactations and no skin lesions. That would be my big tip now. I'll, I'll mention it again later, but just don't take it, the records as, oh, she's grand. Make sure you're looking at her teeth. Make sure they're nice and smooth. There's no warts because that's where all the bacteria live. So if you're, you know, it's very, very hard to get those teats sterile clean to put in the sealer. So always be careful of those cows. So milk recording, it's a, it's the key to having a successful, safer selective dry cow therapy. Um, you'd be brave to try, you know, selective dry cow without it. I uh, recommend it to start pre-drying off. That's to assess you know, what's your infection rate going into dry off and what's your cure rate? Are you curing um, diseases, you know, the, the mastitis during the dry period or are they still coming out of the dry period infected? So the target would be an 85% cure rate and then you want less than 10% new cases. Uh, so it just gives you that um, chance to monitor. So then ideally commencing 60 days of calving um, after calving, so you want to know within 60 days, like how the dry period went. So that gives you the best indication of how your cows coped during the dry period. Uh, so at least four times a year, I know a lot of services is minimum six. So the more you do, the more information, the safer the selective dry cow therapy is for your cows. And there's me and my, uh, getting a, a picture of my dad in the back of the, in the parlor, uh, trying to hide. <laughs> But um, so milk recording and cow performance. So it's not all about selective dry cow. It's about selecting breed, selective breeding. So you get to, you know, know which cows are the best cows for your dairy replacements, improving your EBI overall on the farm, selecting culls. So they're problem cows. Maybe they might have a staph aureus problem. You know that, you know, that's a bug that hides in the in the udder and it's very difficult for, for antibiotics to actually attack it because it goes into an abscess. So they're the cows that might cure for a couple of weeks and then they come back again and they're millionaires and, you know, they should not be bred from and they should be called if possible. Um, so all of that reduces your somatic cell count and then also selective breeding will increase your EBI, your solids, your, you know, your milk production, fertility, everything. So you're getting an overall... Um, better functioning, profitable farm from doing the milk recording as well, as well as having a safer selected dry cow process. So approximately 47% of dairy farms are recording. That's the latest um, ICBF statistic. Now, hopefully um, after Christmas, that'll be even more that a lot of people will go for this pre-drying off um, milk recording because it is a, an important one to start off for next year because it gives you an idea of what's going on. And uh, according to Tagus research, uh, I think this was in 2015, so there's a 4% increase in gross margins, 7% in milk yields, and 25% in herd health somatic cell count. I actually read in another paper by Animal Health Ireland that um, gross margins are, can be, are now up to 11% in current research and 13% uh, in milk heels and still 20, 25-26% in a better improvement in, in somatic cell count, um, lower it. So my tips, finally, I won't keep you much longer, but my top tips for selective dry cow therapy is eat breakfast. Don't go into drying off your cows hungry and be like me quite hangry when I don't eat. Um, you know, do it on a good day and be organized, lay out everything on a table, either beside you. It depends, obviously, if you're a rotary parlor or if you have the other side of the herringbone, use it, clean it, 
make sure the whole parlour is spotless. That's another point. Um, don't just do it at the end of milking. Get all the cows out, clean the whole parlour. You know, this, this for me is a surgical procedure. When I'm going into a section, I have my gown, my gloves, I have my hippie scrub in my book. You know, I'm sterile, as sterile as I possibly can on farm. So, you know, this really, it, it's a step up from your blanket dry cow therapy. You really do have to be extra, extra clean. So gloves, if possible, you know, you might be, you might be doing 10 cows, selected dry cows on, on a day, or, you know, if possible, new gloves for every cow, if possible. But I know that's not always, but even just changing them, maybe every couple of cows, but don't keep the same pair of gloves for all 10 or all 20 cows. It's, you know, this, this is, this is important to get this right because it can have, you know, circumstances that can go wrong with selective dry cow as well. You know, E. coli mastitis, putting dirt up into the udder. That's not what you want. Um, so teeth score, as I said, the smoothness. So you can see there in that picture, you really want a nice smooth teeth. You don't want any um, like black spot or any kind of bacterial infections, warts, anything like that. So those cows really you know, they, they, they would be a risk for selected dry cow. Uh, a bucket of cotton pads. My dad started using this lately. It's, he gets a nice bucket with surgical spirits. He's always used the wipes. But actually, when you start drying off cows with the wipes and you kind of realize how much things you're touching, how finicky they are, they can be an introduction of bacteria. You know, if you're, if you're, it's just a lot easier if you have one bucket of clean pads and then put, get another bucket for your, for your dirty pads. And if not, maybe remove all the, the wipes and put them into a bucket. That's another way if you want to try and use them up. But um, don't put your sealers in warm water either to soften them. A lot of people may, might have done this in the past, but maybe in a warm house or beside, you know, like a, a radiator or something is OK. But just not into the water because it causes pseudomonas risk, which is a very dangerous bug if you're going to be putting it straight up into another, especially without an antibiotic. Um, so don't do that. Stand in a yard 30 minutes. That's an old kind of, you know, that's nothing new, but it allows the sphincter and that keratin plug, you know, to, to form. And you don't want them going straight into a dirty shed lying down. You want that to close and you don't want any, you want to minimize the bugs coming in and teeth spray after as well. And just remember, embrace your inner surgeon. Um, this is, this is kind of it, you know, you know, you, you see your vets doing surgery you know, this is your time to, you know, play vet and, and be surgically clean because it is so, so important. Um, so that's it. That's it for me. Um, so thank you so much for listening. And yeah. I can ask any question or answer any questions at the end. Lovely. Thanks a million, Hazel. Um, top class as always. Um, yeah, just as Hazel said, um, for everybody watching, if you do have any questions around any of the information or the content that Hazel has discussed there, please just pop your questions in to the chat facility. I see there's a couple there already for you, Hazel. I'm just going to hold on to them for a few minutes, if that's okay. okay. Um, but yeah, just keep your questions coming and uh, we're going to keep a couple of minutes at the end to just cover any questions that might come in. Um, I suppose at this point, we're going to hand over to you, Garod. It's your time to shine. Um, I know you have a little bit of a demo set up to just, I suppose, discuss some of the stuff that Hazel was was talking about there and how you can actually use Herdwatch to help out massively around dry cow time and, and getting cows ready to dry off. Yeah, it'd be a hard act to follow, but but I'll try my best. Um, I just want to bring yes. up the watch here for you, Garod, if you bear with me for a second. Um, yeah, that's no problem. Um, I suppose while you're getting that up there, on um, I suppose while it's fresh in the head, and after Hazel covering the topic of kind of select dry cow therapy and even drying off your cows, I suppose I suppose it'd be no harm if we actually show that new feature first um, through this demo. Sure. So. I suppose in Herdwatch with our latest update, we've added a dedicated area for, I suppose, your whole dry cow management and selective dry cow therapy uh, management area, just to have all your records in the one place to give you an oversight of your herd, of the cows say, that are dried, which cows are to be dried, an indication of what cows might be suitable for selective dry cow therapy. Um, like looking at Hazel's slide, and I've been on a few workshops before around selective dry cow therapy. Getting a list of cows suitable for for the application is is one thing on a piece of paper, but there's also a lot of external factors. Like really go in there with your surgeon hat on, 
great tips there about warts and everything like you know these are the things a tag number on a piece of paper you, you don't see so say so they're all uh, important factors but i suppose to get started on you might just jump straight into to management there and within management you'd see we have a new area added called dry off selected dry cow therapy management area so when a user clicks in there it kind of gives them an oversight of their herd now this is a collation of information that herd watch that have come in from ag food icbf and from memory needs and everything that you may have recorded on the app so up here on this app you see that we have 46 cows in herd our average herd SEC from the milk recordings record throughout the years at 158,000 uh, cells. Then within the, the list, we could see that there's going off the figures that we have set up, which can be changed. There's 34 cows su potentially suitable for selected dry cow therapy. Again, I'm not saying that these 34 cows could, could get selected dry cow therapy. It's only a suggestion. Like you should go through this list, say, I don't know, you might have your consultants which from Animal Health Ireland or your own vet. Like, uh, this is only a suggestion. As well as that, then, it shows you your cows are to be dried and which cows are dried. And within this new kind of look, we've introduced this new capability that you can actually drill down into the tile to see the list of animals behind it. So, for instance, on a few click on cows to dry there, It brings up a list of them 45 cows and within that list then we have a range of different columns with information under each column so we have their dry status their latest somatic cell count from their last milk recording their highest recorded somatic, somatic cell count during the, the lactation if there's any cases of mastitis recorded that cow on her watch during her lactation as well what lactation she she's in so I know some farmers might want to dry off springers a bit quicker than they would say cows that are in their third, fourth, fifth lactation. Going on from there, there's other key points of information that you might need just around doing normal dry off management or, or selective dry cow management, such as their, their last calving date, which gives you an indication of their dates in milk as well. Their next expected calving date. So if you're thinking about drying your cow when they're coming up to 60 days, 70 days away, all that information is there and if you scroll across in as well you'll see we we've also brought in a few key bits of information from your last milk recording for each cow so that includes your your milk yield fat percentage protein percentage uh, and lactose percentage so all that information is there in the one place in the one list that there might be the points of information that you might want to see when you're deciding of what cows you're thinking to dry whether it's in a month's time two months time two weeks time whatever it may be as well as that there, there's nice functionality here as well that you can reorder the columns by dragging and dropping on your phone to the whatever order you want so if you wanted to bring up the expected calving date up by the latest sec you can do that so you can bring the piece of information you want close together so you can see it all side by side so this is kind of a new table that we've created within the app that that should enable farmers to see a lot more in the one area and make them and allow them make better management decisions from that even um if you return there to the dashboard on like i can kind of go through a rough example there of when a farmer is thinking about say thinking about drying off cows maybe they've been using blankets uh dry cow therapy there over the last couple of years and they're thinking to themselves right maybe i'll chance a couple of my cows this year that is suitable for for to see which cows could be suitable for selected dry cow therapy before i maybe consult my vet uh it may be so what i'd suggest the farm do or it'd be up to them as well this you can click into your list of cows that are suitable for for selective dry cow therapy it's shown 34 here so i suppose what that 34 means it means that first of all your somatic cell count her, overall herd reading is under your threshold which is a setting that's set i believe it's set at two hundred thousand by default but that can be changed to one hundred thousand, whatever it may be it means that no cow has had a case of mastitis during her lactation it also means that the the cow hasn't had uh sec of herself over two hundred thousand during the lactation as well so that's just kind of that's a simplified list of, of what this 
this is. Now, if I am a farmer for the first time, I might think a, a threshold of, say, a cow getting SEC of 200,000, a bit high. A filters can be applied to this list. So if you hit the search icon in the top right hand corner and click on filter, all these pieces of information are filterable. So look, I'm a cautious Tom here. I don't want to go <laughs> recording all my cows or, or picking all my cows for, for selected dry cow therapy. I only want to say, for instance, say in my last milk recording, I only want cows that have a SCC less than 50,000. 50, so if you click on latest SCC, I can set my range here to 50. As well as that, I'm thinking to myself, God, I'd want to have cows now that have had a SEC reading over 50,000 again throughout our whole lactation. You can even set the highest SEC during their lactation. You can set a threshold on that as well. And you apply. And say, for instance, now I'm only kind of looking at the cows or her due to calf maybe from... I suppose the first half of February, I can even apply a filter to what expected calf and date range I see the cows fall into. So for instance there, I don't know if you pick a date in the middle of, of uh, February there. Okay. If you click on apply. So this brings up a list of the seven cows that meet that criteria. So these are seven cows that Say they, they haven't the case of mastitis during their lactation. They haven't had an SCC reading of over 50,000 during their lactation either. And they, they potentially could be suitable for, for selected dry cow therapy. So, or even the, even you can use this for drying off cows normally. Say you know your 5, 10, 20, 30 cows are doing selected dry cow therapy on. As you're drying off cows, you might be using their calving dates and maybe their milk yield. You can apply it in filters as well. But say, for instance, now these are the seven animals that are dried off. They were dried off in the parlor. I want to record all this information now for my cross compliance, my board BIA. You can do that easily by hitting the plus button in the bottom right hand corner. And the app is smart enough to know the seven animals you filtered out there. So you can actually copy them seven animals into a group. So if you're doing this now, say you're only identifying cows for that may be suitable for selected dry cow therapy, you could, might create a specific group for that and maybe share that with your vet, whoever down the line, to go through the rest of the figures that uh, or pints of data that Hazel mentioned earlier. Yeah, I think we're on. Internet but down in Clare is not the best to see. Like can you hear us? You can, I think I'm back. To, I can yes, hear now um, if you can hear me. Yeah, I know. We just lost you for a second. If you want to maybe just go yeah. back to um, just just the, the section just after we selected the seven animals. Yes. Yeah, so if you selected the seven animals, you can copy them into any task you may want. So more often than not, if you're drying off cows, obviously you're going to have some paperwork in terms of if the if it wasn't the selected dry cow therapy treatment, you'd be recording the keprovan, whatever they may be, the teeth sealer, the antibiotic they got. So you can go straight into your cattle treatment. Okay. And then you can select whatever antibiotic you use if if a case that you weren't doing selected dry cow therapy. Or even if you're using a teeth sealer, for instance, you can select it here. And as normal, you can put in your, your information there, the the time it took and the, the dose or before tube for each of the teats. And a new area that people who are familiar with herd to see that if a treatment reason of dry off has been selected, you're also now can select the, the dry off treatment types. So whether it was teat sealer only, dry cow tube, dry tube and sealer. This again is just to help farmers just input their information into one place and allow us to send that information onto ICBF without the farmer having to go onto their onto that website again to input information that they've already recorded. So just kind of cuts out the need of having to record that type of information. So Garo, just a, a quick one while you're doing that. If if I know we selected seven cows here, but if, if it was a case that you maybe only dried off four of them, is there a way at this point to maybe 
not select the seven or edit the cows that you've selected? Exactly, yeah. You can quickly on, on the screen that's in front of you now, just untick the cows that are ticked there. Or even at the bottom, it kind of gives you an oversight of the cows you have selected. So you can always have a look at that. If 610 wasn't dried off, for instance, you just have to tap on her and she's unselected and you'd only six animals bring it when you save the record then. And again, I suppose a point to remember is if you do make a mistake here, not to worry. It's not set in stone. Everything can be edited, updated after. Um, it's a question that often comes in, like you just hit the three dots there in the top right-hand corner and you can edit the record there if you want to add in a cow or take a cow if you put in the wrong date. Like these are the common things that can happen, but all that is editable. It's not set in stone, so, so don't worry in that end. Okay, thanks for all. Um, there has been loads of questions um, for both you, Garod, and Hazel. So um, I suppose just before we finish the demo, Garod, there has been uh, one question that came in from John. Uh, he was just, I think he might actually have two questions for you. Uh, so give me a second, and we'll just pull that up um, and see if you can maybe help him out. He was just asking, actually, can you view, I, I know we can. you've shown the milk records at a total level there, but is there a quick way to view it on an individual cow? Yes, yeah, so all this information, I suppose, around your latest milk recording, expected calf and date, last served date, last, last calf date, is all available on the animal's profile. So if you just click onto your 83 animals in herd, and you can just click on any animal there. So again, this is kind of something that came just in the previous release that we've broken up the animal's profile into sections. So... You can see here, dairy farmer, one of the top sections there will be the milk performance. So that kind of brings you in a collation of the milk records that came in over the over the milk period. Look, I can see the snack Excel count that cows, 204,000. I would think to myself, maybe she, she, she's not the one for, for selected dry cow therapy. If you are looking at it at an individual cow level basis, uh, that information is there on, on the animal's profile. Brilliant. And just, I suppose, while we're discussing the whole milk records and selective dry cow area growth, as, uh, at a general level, um, there's a question asked, how do we actually get the milk records into Herdwatch? So maybe for farmers that have never milk recorded before, maybe for even for you, Hazel, and your dad at home, how, yeah. how once they start milk recording, how do they get the actual records from ICBF or from NMR or CIS in the UK into Herdwatch? Yeah, so for the different regions, it's slightly different. So on the Ireland side, it's very easy. Um, once your herd watch is linked up with ICBF, all the records will come in automatically a couple of days after you do your, your milk recordings. Um, you can do that through the app via the side menu or, or if you're having any difficulty, just give us a bell, drop us a message. We'll be more, more than happy to, to walk through with you. All you need is your ICBF username and password. Sync that up and the worst thing that happens automatically to like magic um i suppose across the pond over in, in the united kingdom scotland northern ireland and wales it's slightly different where um where you just have to it's a bit more manual process so if you are milk recording whether it's through nmr or cis do get in contact with us um there, there's manual forms that you may have to send out and once we get you linked up then it kind of gets more automated then that we get to, to get your milk records into the app and you'll see all this benefit as well when you go into the new areas like to select a dry cow dry cow management area all that information will be collated there in the one spot for you um to make it to make it more I suppose make it more efficient when, when you're making your, your decisions on what cows to dry off when to dry off and which cows may be suitable for selected dry cow therapy down, down the line um yeah so even like oh and i know there was a webinar on on it before but yeah as well away from the selected dry cow and dry cow management area if you are milk recording and you want to see top performance cows you want to see the latest results of your last milk recording all that information is available to you within the performance tile so if you click into performance you'll see that we have a de dedicated area called milk recordings Within that, we have a herd summary that's available in the herd average tile. And then we have an individual cow summary that's available within the per cow tile. And again, very like the, the last table we've seen earlier, it has all the information you may need for from your milk recording. And this can be viewed at a test day level, yield to date level, and 305 day prediction level. 
and as well all these columns can be moved about you can filter them from high to low low to high i see here you've already filtered your yeah. your cows by somatic cell count highest to lowest if you click on scc again that will sort it from lowest to highest so all this is editable you can move it about to see what you want to see there's a few color elements there to kind of like traffic lights giving you a warning there if a cow hits a certain level that maybe she need, may need attention she might need a mastitis treatment or, or whatever it may be um but even if you scroll across there we have all different information that you might want to see from 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 the from the milk carding might help you make breeding management decisions down the line if you have a cow there you really like her you're you're thinking of keeping daughters from her you can see do her milk records back up to what you think she is performing in, in, in the dairy and you can really make nice good management decisions that way with that information that's available there okay. thank you very much Grod. um hazel i hope you've enjoyed the break and um, there's there's plenty of questions here for you so uh, at that break oh, is, is <laughs> sharp, you know um so um, well done Grod. that was great yeah thanks Grod. and um, we, there, there might be some more questions but we'll come back to you in a couple of minutes Grod. um mm. Hazel, just to pop over to you, so there is some questions, like I said, have come in. Um, Declan was the first one in here. He actually has two questions for you. Um, so his first question was um, for Hazel, uh, if your average somatic cell count over the years is greater than 200,000, can you qualify for the vet consult? And um, No, you can't qualify for the funded Animal Health Ireland consult. That is one of the eligibility um traits that animal health ireland has put in place obviously the consults aren't cheap so they take up time and um so look that that's just one of the the, the criteria and you know it's just in place so they brought it in a couple i think it's been running now for four years um well definitely three anyway and i i was one of the first vets to attend the um training i'd say 2018 and it was yeah again there was there was very like there's a lot more herds now that can qualify for it because they're milk recording than when i first trained up um so it's it is it is a great incentive if you if you can qualify for it to sign up yeah okay thank you hazel uh, i suppose the second part of that question from declan again was um if that's the case does this mean you must do blanket dry cow therapy no, like there's no one um, saying that you must do, you know, blanket therapy because, look, we must not do it next year. So that's the main aim of tonight's talk um, that we have to, we will have to change. And I think obviously a, f a farm with continuous high cell counts and is a higher risk. But I think you just need to consult with your vet, but it wouldn't be part of the Animal Health Ireland funded consult. But your vet is always there for advice um, as well. So, you know, it's, it's, I think just, and talking to your, you know, co-op advisors and everything as well, you know, there's a lot of people that can help you out. If this is, this is always this, if you haven't been doing it, it can be quite daunting. So, uh, you know, you have to acknowledge that it is daunting and you have to do everything that you can to prevent it causing issues going forward. But there's been a lot of farmers had great success so it's nothing, you know, it's it's not all doom and gloom either. Okay, thank you, Hazel. Mm -hmm. um, next question is from Brian. Um, Brian is asking, Hazel, would you cut or burn off the hair on the other before dry off? Uh, I've come across a few farmers that do this. They have the special, um, um, what would you call it? The singer, I suppose, uh, that singes the, um, it's like a, a very low temperature flame and it works really well. And it, it, does, it does clean up the other, Quite well i wouldn't say that every farm needs it um i have had farms that had mastitis issues and they went through all of all the other side of things milking parlors hygiene all that and it was just another step that 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 they did um so i've, I've had farmers that have good results in it but i wouldn't say it's it's a must um that every farm has to start doing it but that that um singer can work quite well brilliant mm -hmm. Um, not everyone's going to have that. <laughs> yeah, not everyone's going to have it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Hazel. Um, mm -hmm. Road, one for you. Um, somebody has asked, can I print off the cows due to dry off list in her watch? You sure can. Um, but in the report section there, I don't know if you'd still be able to show it. Yeah, uh, yeah within reports, 
you if you go to herd animal reports i think top of my head it should be available in there and if you scroll down along so there is there's two different reports there's one there that's one that kind of gives an indication which cows may be suitable for selected dry cow therapy uh, which can be, be ran as well as that we have one then that gives you a list of your cows whether they're dried not dried their estimated calving date with the number of days away their last calving date and the lactation drain so it has all kind of the information they may need on it and it's ordered by say from your cows nearest the calving would be at the top of the list going and the cows farthest away from calving which is the bottom of the list so that is that and that can be got in pdf and excel format so that that's there available within the report section thanks garod um there's another question here it's probably for you as well garod um do we send dry off information to cis at the moment cis we as far as i know we definitely get uh, information from cis i would know off the top of my head but it's something i can double check tomorrow and get back go back to you Right. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure. I don't think there's a name on that question, but if you want to maybe just pop in a follow up um, to Mervyn there, what we can certainly do is we can, we can give you a call and somebody on the support team can reach out and we can double check your records and see what's been sent over to CIS there. Um, is, there's another question for you here from Martin. Um, Martin's just asking, will your vet be responsible for prescribing dry cow antibiotics from 2022? Yes, they're a POM. So from 2020, you know, you will need a prescription um, from a vet that, um, so there's a lot of um, a lot of talk about POMs at the moment and, you know, what what classifies, um, you know, a clinical exam, etc. And so look, there's, they're still negotiating things, but yes, it will, they're POM products, so they're a veterinary prescription. Uh, so that you will probably be able to, you'd have to get a veterinary prescription for dry cow therapy. Yes. In, okay. in, in, a, in a quick answer. Yeah. Hope that answers it for you, Martin. Uh, thanks again, Hazel. Um, there's one last question here for you, Hazel. It's from John. Uh, John's just asking, will this be a requirement or a need for suckler herds or suckler cows? Um, well, I don't. Well, you wouldn't be drying off uh, suckler mm. cows, but it will be um, all of the other things. So the redu reduction of the critically important antibiotics, 100%. Uh, again, I mentioned about the weanlings going into a shed, you know, dosing them just for the sake of dosing them with an antibiotic um, will not be acceptable. You know, like obviously with pneumonia outbreaks and things like that, and and you know, vaccination will really become the the mainstay of of how we we prevent disease in future. Moving away from jabbing, and uh, you know the vaccination will be will be will be the thing, and it's good because any disease. So say an animal got a case of pneumonia, that case of pneumonia will will put back that animal you know, in growth rates and, you know, that's profit in your in your pocket as well. And you have to feed that animal for longer. So actually, if they never get the disease because they're vaccinated, yes, there's an initial cost of, you know, a 10 euros max, but it actually saves you in the long run, you know, because even if the even if the shot of antibiotic cures them, the damage has already been done and they still have to come back from that, if you get me. So. Get yeah things are just things are, are moving in a good direction and it's it's nothing to be overly you know we need to just embrace it and and move with the change um so yeah okay so suckler farmers will have to change things as well change things as well mm -hmm. thanks hazel john i hope that answers the question for you um looks like road has gone to sleep there um so we're, ne we're nearly done um there's actually one last one here um it's probably for it's for like Garod, are you still there? I think we've lost Garod. Um, it's from Dan anyway. Dan is just asking, uh, can I get my? Uh, he gets you your, get your scanning done by by Dan Ryan. Is there a way of uploading his scan results directly onto Herdwatch? Um, to the best of my knowledge, to answer that question for you, Dan, um, we don't link in directly with with Dan at the moment. I do believe he sends his scan results when he's out on farm to ICBF. So once they do hit ICBF, obviously we can bring those records down to the app. There might be a slight delay um, in those records coming into Herdwatch for you based on how long it takes for 
their records to come from Dan to ICBF. But it is something that I know if Garod was, was still here, um, he'd be able to delve into a little bit more and give a bit more detail on. We are obviously, we've spoken to Dan a couple of times um, before uh, in relation to getting these records in there. So um, hopefully that kind of answers your, your question. We do get them from ICBF directly, but it can take a little bit of time depending on how long it takes Dan to get those records up to ICBF. So I hope that answers you, that question mm -hmm. there. Um, I think that's all the questions I have for you, Hazel. So um, well done, and thanks very much for that. Um, we're nearly done. Um, I don't know if Bill Barrow has left us. Um, so we're on big I screen have, now. <laughs> yeah, it's just me and you. Um, I do have one or two uh, last slides uh, just before we head off. Um, just for, I suppose this is really relevant to to our Irish farmers. Um, the National Dairy Day is. It, normally takes place in, in Cork, down around your part of the country, Mill Street, every October. Um, it's a virtual event this year, but Herdwatch are giving away um, 10 premium tickets to the to the virtual event uh, in, in, in of the National Dairy Show this year. Um, very, very easy. It couldn't be actually easier to win one of these tickets. Um, they're available to, to people that are in attendance tonight. We have 10 to give away. So we just need you to answer one very simple question. Um, and that question, you can see it there in, in the orange banner. What is the name of the new service that Herdwatch has launched only a month ago? Um, uh, that's already allowed members to plot over 55,000 acres of land. So if you can just stick your answers into the, the comments or into the chat field there, what we're going to do is we're going to pick 10 winners at random and, and we'll get in touch in the next uh, couple of days via email. So we'll give you a couple of minutes there just to... See if you can get that answer in there. I, I suppose I can't give it away, but um, it should be fairly straightforward and obvious. Um, bro, don't answer it there now. And by the way, thanks for leaving us, but you can't take one of those tickets either. So you're out of the draw straight away, bro. Oh, and I'm actually heading down that direction at, at that, that weekend, so that them tickets would be very handy. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they would have. But it's a virtual event if you're listening to me a second ago, bro. It's not actually taking place this year. So, um, but yeah, no, look, if, if you know the answer, just pop the answer into the chat there. Mervyn is, is keeping an eye on it, and we'll be able to reach out and get those tickets over to you in the next few days. Um, other than that's that, a great idea. Yeah, yeah, no, we're looking mm. forward to that. So, um, that's pretty much it for this evening. Um, thank you to everybody for tuning in, Hazel. Once again. Thanks a million. Absolutely brilliant Thank content you. as usual. Uh, it's a joy to have you on the webinar. So um, I suppose for anybody that's maybe, you know, it's your first webinar or maybe for people in the UK, um, I definitely recommend following Hazel on Instagram straight away to see some of the content, some of the stuff that she's that she's uh, promoting and doing on a daily basis on farm um, and even in, in the clinical role now up in, in Highfield. So um Hazel can be found, I suppose, easiest way is just popping your name on Instagram, Hazel or it's Vets on the Move, I think is, is your kind of your handle, is it? Yeah, Hazel Mullins will get me or Vet on the Move with two O's will get me as well. So it's, um, I usually, you'll see me in my, my green calving gown. And uh, yeah, like, so I'm hoping that, I suppose the content lately has just been a little bit quiet just with the move and jobs, but hopefully once I settle in now and things get going again, it'll uh, ramp up and um yeah spring is always fun with content so it's it should be good yeah 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 well, thanks a million once again hazel um i suppose Thank for anybody so else that's watching if maybe if you missed the start don't be worried we're going to send um an email uh, tomorrow with a full replay you can watch everything back all the stuff that hazel has covered the demo with the road as well look if you have any other questions that maybe you couldn't think of this evening you can always just reach out within the app there's a message center just drop us a message somebody on our support team can give you a call or reply back to you or if you'd like to give us a call directly our numbers are there on the screen um, and obviously if you haven't managed to download the latest version of the app with with some of the new features there including the, the milk module and milk records just pop over to the app store and play store make sure you have everything up to date i think there's been a couple of releases there recently growed so um anything from you grow before we drop off is uh, any sneak previews you'd like to let anybody know what's maybe in the pipeline or coming down the track soon yeah, no, um, one thing you mentioned there to, to start the slides that coming up there will be a functionality, functionality to record your abrasion score, your mobility score. Uh, you can track laying the scores as well, and it kind of comes out in ni nice uh, PDF and Excel formats as well that you'll be able to produce as well. I know this is kind of more of a pressing issue over uh, on the UK side of things. It's something a lot of farmers have to record for their different... Uh, different quality assurance scheme so that that's coming down the line with it within the coming releases as well so i suppose that's one one that uh, a lot of the dairy farmers will, will be keeping an eye on um another one that came 
within this release as well as the ability to record your your bulk tank recording so there's a feature in there now you'll see it within the action drawer and hit the big orange plus button called bulk tank recording which you can put in details of say the receipt that the lorry driver might leave if you get a text with your bull tank readings you can stick that into her watch as well so again it, it feeds more information in and like i know it was covered in one of the areas it's another area where, where you can see your scc at a bull tank level so that will hopefully eventually feed down into lists that we might give you uh in terms of what cows are, are, are suitable for selective dry cow therapy but they're all things coming down the line and hoping to, to improve them as well as the as the months and years go by as well Okay, lovely stuff. Thanks a million, Garod. Hazel, once again, thanks a million. Uh, really enjoyed having you again on the webinar this evening. And as always, the stuff is always brilliant. So thanks a million. We're looking forward to getting you back on another one soon. Um, oh, I'd love keep, to. I love coming on. It's great. Um, Garod, I suppose I have to say thanks to you as well for the demo. You've done very well. Well done. Yeah, well, what do I do to get my Instagram handle up here on? Uh, <laughs> how, many, how many followers do I need? You have a long Just way to go. You have a long way to I'll go. tag you. <laughs> um, yeah, and look, I suppose, I suppose do make sure and follow her watch on Instagram as well if you, if you haven't already as well or um, we're on Facebook and, and Twitter and everything else as well so listen thanks a million everybody for watching we'll be back really soon uh, with another webinar um, so keep your eyes peeled for that and uh, yeah stay safe and take care thanks, thank guys. you thanks bye, bye.